other David, our third David, number three, Dave to the three, is David Kunick, pronounced Kunick. Hello, David Kunick of DMC Athletics and Pazoo.com. How are ya? I'm doing great, and you know what? I'm happy to make, uh, instead of having Dave squared, we can make this Dave cubed today. Ooh. That's it. Cube. This is, this is, this is going to be a hot hangout. Hey, uh, David Deutsch, I will do, um, why don't you do your quick intro, then I'll do my intro, then we'll introduce uh, David Kunick. Perfect. Uh, my name is David Deutsch. My company is Synergy Social. We do a social media strategy for companies that are uh, frightened by Facebook, terrified of Twitter, or lost on LinkedIn. And uh, I was once run over by a giant pig. And if you watch the replay of last week's Hanging Out with David, Dave, you will see what the story is all about with that giant pig. And I am Dave Philp. I have I feel like I have very flat hair today. I'm going to do the hoodie thing pretty soon so I can look cool. And, and like I'm from the hood. I'm from this thing on my head. And uh, I run My You Choose. Uh, you can... Watch this that's happening right now on myyouchoose.com and our company is YouChoose. We do live music events. We also do social media. And today we are with David Kunick. A little bit about David Kunick. David is an accomplished physical therapist and business owner with experience in sports medicine, medicine, orthopedics, and manual therapy. And he's worked with people in all walks of life as well as professional and Olympic sports teams. And... Also, in addition to running DMC Athletics, David Kunick also has a strong belief in true med the true medical team approach to wellness that incorporates all facets of, facets of health, fitness, and medical science, including pet therapy. And David took his work to the next level by establishing Pazoo, Inc., which is pazoo.com, and we're going to talk about all that stuff tonight. So, David Kunick, thanks so much for joining David and Dave. Thank you very much for having me tonight, guys. Appreciate it. Good to see you. We're going to start with a question for you. Very first question is, so, and this is funny because, David, I've known you for a while, and your company is called DMC Athletics and Rehabilitation, and it took me uh, until about a an hour ago that I realized the D was David and the C was for Kunick. So what does the M stand for? And this has nothing to do with rap. Uh, it stands for Matthew. It's my middle name. Matthew. David Matthew uh, Kunick. Yes, that is correct. Okay. And when you were in the bars back in college and beyond, were people ever making the run DMC jokes to you, which we won't do because we're more mature than that? Uh, no, actually, most people just call me by my last name. So, or because uh, I went to a small school up in Maine, they would call me Dave from Jersey. So, that'll do it. So, so I, I, before the show started, you had mentioned something about a calling at a bar. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, we got to try to keep this somewhat professional because I am the CEO of a publicly traded company. Of course. So um, without diminishing myself too much, <laughs> yes, having a great, unique last name, like Kunick, a lot of people would say Q for short, and there were always little callings. If you were with your group of friends and you need to find me or I need to find people, the last name would always be shouted out loud. Right, right. David, I, uh, David Kunick. <laughs> this is going to be tough. We were talking uh, a couple months ago, and you just reminded me because you went to school in Maine. Mm -hmm. and you you have a good George Bush story, our first George Bush president story. Do you want Do you want to tell that to us? Because I yeah, think it'd sure, be definitely, great. definitely. Uh, George Bush's uh, George Bush and Barbara Bush, their favorite restaurant was a place called Allison's in Maine. And at that time, my girlfriend that I was dating, she was wait, being the waitress for George and Barbara Bush Sr. And um, long story short, I went to go pick her up, and she was kind of anxious. They were kind of taking a while, and they go, well, invite the guy that's waiting downstairs to come on upstairs and have drinks with us. So I went upstairs and met Bush Sr. and Barbara Bush, sat down, had a cocktail with them, and... Bush Sr. was a very nice man. All he said was, listen, I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. Do you vote? And I said, yes, sir. He goes, good. That's all that really matters. Because a lot of good people died for that right. And then Barbara Bush said, oh, leave the kid alone. He's fine, you know. So it was, it was really nice to meet them and everything. So That's good. I dated Barbara for a little while while in college, and she's, she's a laugh a minute. <laughs> well, that's something we have to talk about later there. I don't know about that. <laughs> We'll do that off camera. Okay. David, 
David Deutsch, you ask a question now. Yeah, so, uh, you know, what I was thinking was, you know, you're, you're clearly a serial entrepreneur. You're the kind of guy who, uh, you know, starts different companies, has these amazing ideas and stuff. So, like, I'm always curious about the entrepreneur mindset. I'm always trying to learn more from entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I prefer stories about failure to success. Mm -hmm. And that's because that's where entrepreneurs learn. And I know from the venture capitalists that I know, they won't hardly even talk to you unless you've failed at least yeah. once. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say, all right, well, what have you learned? So I was wondering if, you know, if it wasn't uh, too inconvenient, you could maybe share some stories of what you've learned from when you didn't succeed. Oh, definitely. Um... I mean, that's a really good question. I'm actually speaking at the uh, Private Practice Summit in Las Vegas in a few days to a bunch of physical therapists, and I actually I'm giving a good 10 to 15 minutes about all my failures that I've had to really show that I am human and that I can sound like I'm the best thing since sliced bread, but you know what? I've made a lot of mistakes, but I've learned from them and I listen from them. I mean, the biggest failures I can honestly say was um, the first business I was part owner of the deals through a handshake and it was done completely the wrong way and it was done a way that I should have never been done and it separated it made a really bad separation between my former business partner and myself at that time um, the other thing is too was that in reality because I'm six foot three 270 pounds I can be a little intimidating um, and we all go through it I was very quick when I did when I did things. I owned my first company at the age of 25, and um, there was definitely a little bit of arrogance in there. And I'll be the first one to admit to that. It took a while to become humble to realize you don't know it all, and so don't pretend you want to know it all. Um, in terms of actual general business success, knock on wood, I've been very blessed. I've actually been very successful, and I think the reason why that really is is that. I'm the youngest of four kids, and there's 14 years difference between me and the oldest. Mm. So I always learn from other people's mistakes. I always sat back and said, okay, if this person made this mistake, how can I change that and actually learn from someone else? Yeah. Um, for other business owners, I worked for one facility where they did a lot of things the wrong way, and I want to take all their mistakes and then just correct that. Yeah. And, and that's what I really did. And when I started my, my first physical therapy company, I went to 10 different states and just to ask people, hey, how'd you run it? What problems do you run into? And by going to different states all around the country and you learn about other people's mistakes, well, let's incorporate that and learn from it and then so that you don't do it yourself. So kind of a long-winded answer, but that's the best way to put it. I, I will say I, I made a lot more personal mistakes because we grew very fast. You know, I didn't hire the right people. I didn't always have the proper procedures in place at first. Um, but it's just kind of learning from that. And to sit here and to be a 33-year-old CEO of a public trade company, I'm doing something right. So we kind of go from there for everything. That's great. That's fantastic. Dave, you have any follow-up from that? No, I thought he was 32. So I can't believe he's 33. Um, let's get into um, when you started your first company, David Kunick of DMC Athletics. At what point, when did you finish your education? And between then and the day you decided to start your first company, how much time was there and why did you start your first company and not say, I'm going to go work for some other dude, Jack LaLanne or something, LA Fitness? Uh, really simplistic. Um, I had certain life goals. Like, I had certain phases. My first phase was I wanted to become a physical therapist. My second, and I knew that since I was 16 and a half years old, which is I'm very lucky and very blessed because I don't know what they want to do in their life. Um, Secondly, I want to open up my own clinic before I, I turn 30 years old. If I didn't have my own physical therapy clinic before the age of 30, I was getting out of the field altogether. So from there, I always knew what my goal was. Um, pretty much what happened was is that I was actually all set to move to San Diego, California, to become a traveling physical therapist. And a former patient of mine actually called me up out of the blue, and she says, Hey, listen, I think you're a great therapist, but there's this other place closer to my house. But the guy really needs some help, and I think he needs a small investor as well also. I give him your information because I know you want to open up your own place, so here you go. So um, I met with that person right before I was about to move to San Diego. I was about six weeks away from moving to San Diego. Talked to the guy. You know, We literally almost had a handshake deal within three hours. And from there, I talked to a few of my older colleagues, and 
the best advice I probably got at that time was they said, hey, listen, you're 25 years old. San Diego is always going to be there. If it doesn't work out, you can still go to San Diego. But if it does work out, look what happens. Um, from there, I wanted to grow, and he didn't. Um, we went our separate ways. He's doing his thing. God bless him. I wish him the best of luck. You know, I wish much, much success to him and me. You know, I'm shaking and baking, doing my thing. So that's where we kind of get from there. And to get to the next business, the next phase of my life was I always wanted to help out as many people as possible. I want to do public speaking. Now I'm doing different conferences I'm doing public speaking at. And then my next goal is to help as many people as possible. I can only do so much with that with physical therapy. And this opportunity with this other company called Pazoo, P-A-Z-O-O.com. Sorry, it's my own little selfish plug for the company. Um, this is going to give an opportunity to help people not only in the United States but from around the world. So it's really giving me the opportunity to say, okay, here's my next phase in my life and where I want to get to. So tell us about Pazoo, if you don't mind. Now that it's a great segue into it, tell us more about what this thing is and why people, you know, should want to use it or should care or whatever. Yeah. Well, pretty much, it's a. There's an empty um, market. There's a market out there, and there's an empty void. Pazoo is the number one online health and wellness community, social community for people and their pets. And there are really three pillars to the business. One is our website. On our website, we have people like. Dave here, who's actually on our expert panel, where people can sit here and actually talk to one another on an online social community about different questions they have, pieces of advice, from music experts to stress therapy, the chiropractors, the physical therapists, the personal trainers. Um, also on our, our website as well, too, is also some of our different products for health and wellness, for, from vitamins to minerals. And the most important thing is it's not only for people, but it's also for their pets. The second aspect to Pazoo is <clears throat> actually sitting here is our direct response. We're actually going to be doing a direct response campaign within the next 45 to 60 days, which is something we're really excited about. And the third aspect to Pazoo is that we actually have a brick and mortar section, and we actually just announced that Pazoo is about six to eight months ahead of schedule, and we're proud to say that we've actually put some of our pet products in the largest retail chain store in New England. And on top of that, too, we've actually put some products for people actually right here in New Jersey in the Nutrition Zone stores. So it's something that we're super excited about, three different pillars from online communication to one another and experts to products to direct response. So we're really uh, covering all aspects. And I haven't talked about us even going to Germany yet and possibly as well as Great Britain. What? what oh, God, sorry, Dave. Go ahead. No, I'm just going to ask about the, the products that uh, are being sold. What's the retailer in New England, and what type of products are these? Are these your own products, or are they products of somebody you know, and you're kind of doing the retail distribution for them? Um, we actually have a national brand called Max Line that we just came out with. And we have Max Line, which is part of our pet products, as well as our products for humans as well, too. The name of the store is called Pet Life in New England. Um, it's owned by a guy by the name of Peter Rosano, who's a, a vet himself. He has about 13 plus stores all throughout New England. And he's actually sitting here and he's carrying our Oxygenator product, which actually sit here and you add to water and brings more oxygen in the blood system for pets. So your pet becomes more energy and has more, is more vibrant and is more healthier. And then locally, it's um, or nationally, I should say for humans, it's called our Max line. And the product we're most excited about is something called Cell Max which is actually a vitamin which is used to help with adult, stone, as adult stem cell nutrition. So what that means is that we have stem cells. Have you heard of stem cells before? Yeah. Mm. Okay. We've all heard of stem cells. When we get older, we have to take more vitamins, more minerals to stay healthy, don't we? It's a little bit tougher to stay a little more healthier and have homeostasis. Am I right on this? Yes, you are. All right. So how do we take care of our stem cells? Well, this uh, product called CellMax actually gives us nutrition. And here's the best part. One, it's actually formulated by a physician. So you have great credibility there. Two, it's patented. And three, there are over hundreds of testimonials, not only from people like you and I, but also other medical physicians. So it's something we're really excited about overall. How did, if and David, tell me if I'm, uh, Deutsch, tell me if I'm just jumping in too much. Jump, jump away, man. So, the, okay, so this product, the, the MaxLine product that you just mentioned that, that helps with the stem cells, how did you get in touch with the 
create or manufacture of this product? Did somebody come to you, or did you hear about it through through your sources and come find them? And how did that deal even occur? Um, without giving out too much information, um, what I will say is that this company has been around for a while that has the patent to it, and they did everything through the multi-level program and multi-level advertising, and they really wanted to get on to more online sales as well as um, brick-and-mortar sales. And that's how we got in contact with them. They liked the bazoo image. They liked our whole concept on health and wellness, not only for people but also for their pets. So it's just a natural fit all together. So that's great. So, so actually, I, I was wondering. You said something about direct response. Could you elaborate on what that is and what that means? A uh, direct response is, in a nutshell, kind of like when you see uh, sometimes the infomercials or the di digital direct response, where you can buy a product and get it for free the first month, and then get it at a discount price for the second, third, and fourth month. And that's pretty much digital digital response in a nutshell. Okay. <laughs> That's all. I mean, you know, Dave, you have anything else on that? Or well, um, my my last question. Well, sort of another question on Pazoo is just so what what is your goal? What is your ultimate goal for Pazoo? Where do you want it to go? Um, what is your? I know you mentioned Germany and Europe, but um, overall, you know, where are five years from now? Are are we still talking to you about Pazoo, or do, have you sold out? And it's this mega <laughs> Amazon dot com of. Uh, <laughs> Of pet and human wealth, wellness, and what about the apes? Wait, 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 wait! Uh, you're gonna, you're gonna ask DMC if he sold out. I think that's a dangerous thing to say, man. Personally, that's when he takes the fifth. Okay. Um, <laughs> wow, you guys are asking the tough questions right now. I should probably go get my attorney right now to make sure I say everything properly. <laughs> just text him real quick. I'm just doing my Anderson Cooper because. Well, they're the world good questions. Now. You know, I, I won't expect less from you, Dave. So, all right. Why, so let's put, so why let's are you being evasive? What are you hiding? So, so let's put it this way. DMC Athletics and Reeve has been voted the number one physical therapy facility in Morris County, New Jersey for six years in a row. Something no other facility has ever done. And it's something that we've done really good. And a lot of people have been very helpful. DMC Athletics and Rehab has an MD testimonial page where doctors like us so much, they actually want to give us a testimony and post their name on it on our website. Is DMC still there? Yes, it is. Is DMC still thriving? Yes, it is. It goes back to what I said before. My ultimate goal is to help as many people as I can. And I'm going to drop a little knowledge right now on you. I'm going to quote a little Walt Whitman, Leaves of Grass. No, you do not know me nor who I am, but fear not, for I should be good health to you, nevertheless, in filter and fiber of your blood. Meaning, I'm always going to be in good health to you. Meaning, I'm always going to try to help you out. I may not have a positive impact on your life today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not even for months, but at one point, our interaction together, we're going to have a positive impact. And Pazoo.com is going to give that positive impact. In the health and wellness field, we, call it, we talk about the word empower. We want to empower others with knowledge. You know what? Why can't we do that in an online health and wellness community? And that's what we're doing with Pazoo. To answer your question, is Pazoo still going to be there in five years from now? Yes, it is. Is it going to be on a huge national level? going to be huge all throughout, throughout the world? Yes, it is. We have sat here, I think we went public in April, don't quote me on that, but I will say is that if you read our press releases, we're already uh, in Germany on their stock exchange. People love what we're doing so much here in America for a social community, for help for people and their pets, as well as providing products for people and their pets, they already want in Germany. And other countries are already starting to notice this, saying, hey, why can't we have Pazoo in America out here in Europe? So no, Pazoo's not going anywhere. We're gonna be in this for the long haul. So, well, I've got a really tough question for you over here, actually, if you don't mind. A train leaves Chicago, leaving 800 miles an hour, heading east toward New York at five in the morning. Yep. Another train leaves New York, heading to Los Angeles at six a.m. at 250 miles. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> That's a I, nightmare. I, 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 I would say I would say talk, talk to my management team because they're great. And they'll probably get me the answer for me. So okay, okay. <laughs> what, was Pazoo something that you came up with on your own, or was this? And how did the? And how, here's a. I don't know. If this is a good question because I'm asking it. How did the pet thing? Of course. How did the pet thing come in because my first thought because I'm thinking about you today, and um, I was wearing my hoodie as I was thinking about you, no, and I was no. thinking. Um, 
you know in hospitals, for example, dogs go into the hospital and they, they say that dogs, therapy dogs, that they're great therapy for, for people. So is that sort of where you got the idea or is it somewhere completely different from that? Um, in a nutshell, the best way to put it is that over 60% of Americans have either a dog or a cat. They have pets. And they treat their pets like children, as their loved ones. If you look at the research, it shows by having a pet it helps for, with different hormonal levels, stress levels, so forth and so on. But when you look out there in the market, you know you have to go to one spot to get all your pet stuff. You have to go to another spot to get all your human stuff. Why can't we bring it together in harmony? We all, we all do things hand in hand together. And the management team that we have in place of Pazoo, we have a really good management team in place with a lot of different backgrounds from working with Fortune 500 companies to our president, to our CFO, to our COO, with such different backgrounds that all of us were kind of talking, saying, hey, there is a void out there. And that what is that void? And that's what we went over in the Pazoo is history. And I mean, I, was, I actually thought Dave were going to ask me what the, what the name Pazoo even means. That's what I was actually thought you were going to say for a second. So, Hey, hey David, what, what, what does Pazoo even mean? <laughs> Yeah, that's a great question. You know what, Dave and Dave, thank you so much for asking that question. <laughs> that was an amazing question. So, Pazoo actually means the sound that occurs before a bright flash of light. So, each time you have that physical, mental, emotional, that internal aha moment, there's that internal sound. And that's called being Pazoo. Okay. So, it also means something else, but I'll let you guys look that up on your own. So. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Nice. This, is, this is not appropriate for children. I'm getting the sense. So, yeah, very simple. So the, the the hidden niche market opportunity then is for humans to gnaw on bones. Is that what I'm hearing? If you really want to take it that way, Dave, then sure. <laughs> but but in reality, you know what? We 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 love our pets. We love our dogs. We love our cats. We love everything. Yeah. So let's let's take care of it all. Listen, we want more simplicity. One stop shop, right? And that's what we're doing. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. I think you're right. People certainly do treat their animals like, uh, like they're, you know, it's it's their family, and animals treat their people like they are, you know, gods. And I think that there's just a wonderful. I, I absolutely agree with you with the pet, the human pet bond. I've had many dogs and cats throughout the years, and uh, you know, I, I absolutely agree. I think it's a, I think it's a fantastic idea. Great. Cool. Yeah. I love the idea. So, so uh, we're we're starting to uh, the clock is starting to tick now. So David Kunick of DMC Athletics in Morris County, New Jersey, and Pazoo.com. My final question, and then David Deutsch, you can have your rebuttal and your final question. My final question is: You uh, come up with an idea tomorrow for another another business of your own. Mm -hmm. For you or for anybody, when you come up with this, you have that. The pazoo happens, and you have your aha moment. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing that you do when you come up with your idea for your new business? Well, I have a journal. It's brown. It says right on it, thoughts. A little cliche, isn't it? You really think about it. It's, it costs a whopping $4.99 for that thought notebook at Staples or Office Max or whatever. It goes in there. It goes right in there, and then you just keep, keep thinking. And, you know, let me ask you this, Dave and Dave. You know the difference between a $10,000 idea and a $10 million idea? No. Um, implementation? You just got to think bigger. That's it. It takes as much effort. So why should we sit here and shortchange ourselves? Short change ourselves? So when you think of an idea, you got to think, okay, how big should it get? How big can it get? What's the end game? You know, um, everyone talks about that book, you know, what's your why right now? But at the end of the day, if what you want to do in life is what your life mission is and what you really want to do in life, then you'll know if it's a good idea or not for you. So, I mean, plus I also do consulting too with other medical and fitness practitioners. I do give them some really good ideas to implement as well too. So, but yeah, that's all it is. The idea comes, it gets written down in a notebook, and then you go through that, you know, you take a look back maybe a few weeks later, a few months later, and kind of see what you were thinking, if that was a good idea or a bad idea. That's great. So. And I guess the last question I have is because I want uh, everyone, all two people watching this, <laughs> to uh, really, what, what is your takeaway that you want people to learn? What is it that you think, if you had some, some wisdom to share with the world, this is your chance. 
right? So you have lots of things. You're a very bright guy. You're a very successful guy. It's fantastic. You have a lot to share with the world. What do you want us to know? Wow, that's a, that's a good loaded question. Um, you know, I think I'm going to talk about something I'm, I'm talking about in a, uh, in a few days in Las Vegas at this conference. What are the two things all of us possess that we can offer to people? Other day, if you want to take a stab. You got anything? I got nothing. I got nothing. The, the two things that we possess that we could pass along to other people. Yep. I got nothing. We, we, we all possess the same two things in every field. One is called knowledge. We all have knowledge. Pass on to others. Educate others. Empower others. And the other thing is too, especially with business owners and entrepreneurs, is that we can offer opportunities. People talk about the term upsell or stuff like that. No, it has nothing to do with upsells. It has to deal with complete service. It has about telling people what your opportunities are. This isn't about us. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about everyone else. We all have knowledge. Why can't we share that knowledge with others? We all have opportunities. Why not share each other with opportunities? Great example is right now we're talking on this show. You know what? Dave and Dave, you came to me and said, hey, I have some knowledge. This is what we're doing. I have some opportunities. And you know, we're excited about this. And I don't know if you, if you even read it today, but if you went on to the stock exchange, you saw there's a press release on right now about this show that went out to all the shareholders and went out to the public. Because you know what? As the CEO of the company, we had the knowledge of what you presented to us. And now we're giving everyone the opportunity to listen into this or to go back a few days later after this and say, hey, let's look at this show. Let's see what this show is all about. You know, it's giving it to others. So we all possess the same two things. Knowledge and opportunities, and we forget that. That's fantastic. That's great. That's fantastic. Well, David Kunick, again, of DMC Athletics in Morris County and Pazoo.com, thank you very much for spending uh, about 30 minutes and 48 seconds with us today. Well, thanks, Dave and Dave. I appreciate the time today. So you guys will go back to Dave Squared now, said Dave Cubed. It's not going to be the same. I will personally feel lonely without you. And I'm going to write a song about that. And as an expert on Pazoo.com, I'm going to talk about it for weeks. Excellent. Nice. I like it. I'm going to drive that traffic drive up that stock. <laughs> all right. I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you so much for your time. Thank Thanks. You Bye. All right. Take care. So for hanging out with David and Dave, I'm Dave. And I'm David. And you've been hanging out. So next week. Oh, David, who do yeah. we have next week? We have a very special guest, my friend, hedge fund manager Jack Killian. 11 years experience as a hedge fund manager, up teen years experience uh, with entrepreneurship, starting and launching and selling companies, and he's a very, very nice guy, and so I'm really looking forward to seeing what Jack has to share with us. And I'm looking forward to your definition of ump teen. That'll be a good one, Dave. Well, that's the teenager who's an ump, see? <laughs> that's low. Hello. Yeah. Sounds like something's on the back. And then the week after that, we have a, 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 a friend of mine since, uh, since high school. His name is Joe Hubert, and he has written a song that is, well, it's not taking the charts by storm yet, but it's a hilari and hilarious song that I think people are going to really enjoy that we're going to play on the air. We're going to interview Joe. This is a song built upon a character that he created more than 25 years ago. And you can uh, listen to this song on iTunes and Amazon right now. It's called Bessie the Wear Cow. And that's all we're going to say right now. Wow. And then uh, that's in two weeks. Three weeks, which would be October the, what's today? October 15th, we're going to have Jake Sassville on, who has been a television personality for about four years already. He's had three different TV shows of his own, including one that is just uh, starting to air now called City of Sass. So Jake is going to be online with us, and he's going to hang out, and that's going to be a very funny interview as well. So I'm looking forward to all this time with you, David. Yeah, likewise. I'm, ha I'm really excited. Thank you. And by the way, Jack's uh, hedge fund is called Eagle Rock Hedge Fund. So you can go ahead and Google Eagle Rock Hedge Fund, Jack Killian's uh, hedge fund, in case you want to do some advanced research and, uh, and you know, reach out to us. If you have any questions, we'll, we'll forward them on. That's right. Ask the questions ahead of time, and we'll answer them for you with Jack. Great. So again, for hanging out with Dave and Dave, I'm Dave. I'm David. Hasta la vista, babies. See ya.